To start, you need your fabric, interfacing, a pattern, and a sewing machine. And we're doing this all on a Singer Heavy Duty. The pattern is available for download at properfitclothing.com. Go ahead, print it out, and connect the panels. Now go ahead and place your panels on the fabric, trace them, and cut them out. You will want to place the top panel on the fold, then also mark the front and the back. This way you don't get it confused after you cut it out. In the end, you'll want one top panel, two side panels, and four brim panels. Now we're going to be adding interfacing to just two of the brim panels. Links to all the supplies will be available in the description. So place the wrong side of the fabric to the adhesive side of the interfacing. You will want to lay a piece of paper over top, this way your iron doesn't get all sticky on the adhesive. Then just iron where the fabric is, let it cool, and peel the paper off. Go ahead and trim around the panels. Then hit it with the iron one more time just to be safe. Then go ahead and take those two brim panels, place the right sides together and do a quarter inch seam. And you're just sewing both of the short edges. Then flip the right side up and go ahead and top stitch both of those seams. Now repeat this process for the other two brim panels. Now take both of those panels that you just sewn together, place the right sides together, lining up the seams, and sew around the outside edge. Trim the seam allowance and then flip it right side out. Now we're going to be adding the stitches to the brim and make sure that outside seam is super flat and then just start stitching around in a circle. Your first stitch you want it about a quarter inch away from the outside edge. And each stitch after that, do about a quarter inch inward until you hit the middle of the circle. And yes, this will take a little bit of time. Just be patient and keep those stitches nice and parallel.
Now take your side panels, place the right sides together and do a quarter inch stitch. Then go ahead and trim that excess fabric. And again, you're only sewing those shorter edges. So we're gonna show you two different options for adding on your bias tape, and these are just two different bias tape folders. The one on the right is just one you can get at any hobby store, and the one on the left is available at capsupplyco.com. We are gonna be using the one on the left just because it's a little bit easier for us to use and we've been using it for a while. But honestly, they both do the same thing, so use whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever one you're using, line it up with your presser foot and then just tape it right on your machine. You definitely are gonna to wanna to make sure this is secure so that way nothing's moving around when you're sewing on that bias tape. And now we're gonna be showing you how to set up your twin needle. And this is super simple. Just install like a normal needle, set your machine to zigzag with zero width and thread two spools of thread the same exact way. Now all you have to do is cut your bias tape to the measurement of the folder and you're ready to start sewing. Next you're going to want to add bias tape and top stitching to each one of these seams and all you have to do is place that seam in the middle of that twin stitch needle and stitch all the way through. This step helps cover up the seams on the inside of the hat and also give you nice top st stitching on the outside of the hat. You can totally just do a regular top stitching but we like to make the inside of the hat look really nice too so this is why we're doing this method. Now mark the top center of your side panel and then the front of your top panel and place right sides together, lining those marks up and stitch all the way around in a circle. Just like in the previous steps, we're gonna be adding a top stitching and bias tape. So go ahead and line that seam up with the twin needle and sew all the way around in a circle. And make sure you have enough bias tape to get all the way around in the circle.
Now you're going to take your brim panels and your top crown, line up the side seams and sew all the way around in the circle. Again, this is about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're going to be attaching the sweatband. This step we made our own attachment and we made this out of heavier stock paper. All you have to do is make a little sleeve that your sweatband fits in there nice and snug and then go ahead and tape that onto your sewing machine. It serves as a guide so that way the sweatband doesn't slide all around while you're sewing it onto the crown. And then once you have your guide into position, go ahead and sew on the bottom edge as if you were top stitching. And it is really that simple. You get a nice top stitch on the outside and the sweatband will be nice and attached on the inside. And we are using professional sweatbands from capsupplyco.com. These are millinery grade and very awesome for making caps. And now to finish off that open edge of the sweatband, go ahead and roll that over into a top stitch. And now we're gonna be adding air vents to the cap and we're just using eyelets. You pretty much just want them to be evenly spaced and centered in each panel. Once you have your marks, go ahead, cut holes, put your eyelets in and press them into place. And if you don't have a press, pliers work just as good for eyelets. But if you're looking for any tools that we're using specifically, we post all the links in the description below, so go ahead and check that out. And there you have it, your own custom bucket hat. The more you make, the better they will get, I promise you that. So definitely don't give up after one cap. And thanks for watching, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think, and we're gonna keep videos coming at you, so stay tuned.